everyone, and welcome to the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world show made for the fans by a fan. I'm your host, as always, Richard Tiemann, and this is the award-winning fan show. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's right, everyone is a fan of something, and we have got something for every fan, especially if you're a fan of the Spokane Shock, because apparently it was quite the shock to hear that they might be making a comeback. So we will have more details on that coming up, as well as the rest of today's headlines, which include the IFL Conference Championship Games. We have our IFL 2019 United Bowl matchup is set. There was some good quality matchups in the AFL as well, and some good games in the NAL, except for one, which was a shutout, a big old goose egg, and we'll talk about that. Also, plus there was a new champion crowned in the All-Star Bass Fishing's Bass Battles uh, River Tournament, and really, there's not a whole lot going on. This will probably be the only episode for this week, simply because it is uh, the week of the 4th of July, which there is... A lot of people out and about. It's hard to track them down. I was lucky to get my guest for tonight when I did because I know that uh, they're extremely difficult right now as far as their their time and their demands. But nonetheless, I was able to pull it off and I got uh, what I thought was a very good guest for right uh, this moment anyway. So big congrats to... Everyone that had a successful weekend and also all the guys uh, that were named in this year's All-IFL team, which is something that the fan show does not do. That's uh, for Last Word on Sports and for the league itself. But, uh, you know, congratulations to those guys. And I see we already got people uh, chiming in today. We got Adam. We got Keith. We got Matt. Hello, guys. Good to see you. And... You know, it was uh, one of those weekends that it, it really just, there was a lot going on. I did my last awards of the week, which some of those even still stirred some controversy. <laughs> but hey, that's the life of media. So without uh, any more delay or further ado, we'll get through headlines. We'll have, we'll talk. We'll let this episode be kind of driven by you guys in the comments there on the Facebook Live. So if you're listening on Spreaker right now, kick it over to Facebook Live. You can watch, you can interact. And of course, for the last portion of the show, we will end our Facebook Live and go over strictly to, uh, or exclusively to Spreaker for my interview with the Fan Show Coach of the Year, Coach Corey Roberson of the Green Bay Blizzard. That's right. Let that salt get right in that wound. Those of you that don't like the decisions I make, <laughs> sorry, it's it's too I, it's too easy. I can't I can't not touch it. Anyway, um, let's see. Oh, Matt, Matt asked live feed of fireworks. I, I guess is that it's like the equivalent of all those different fireworks photos you see that are blurry because people aren't using a good enough camera to take a picture of them. Uh, so I guess maybe. <laughs> We can discuss that, but yeah, let's uh, let's do our thing here. Let's get through headlines, and we'll talk about everything else. So here we go. Headlines, of course, brought to you by uh, Dynamite Enterprises because they want to help you customize your world, Fan Nation. They can make you great things like, well, not like that. I don't know how that got there. It's wow, that's pretty empty. It was that kind of week. It was that kind of week. <laughs> Sorry. I forgot that was there. Uh, it's not being used in the show right now, although it probably should be. But uh, anyway, um, that was my weekend. So uh, they can make you awesome stickers like these guys right here. Look at all this good stuff right now. And it is great quality that they make. They can make you T-shirts, hats. Uh, shout out to the Spokane Wolfpack. Dynamite did not make these shirts, but this is a great quality shirt that the Wolfpack gave me, um, which is another headline as well. But they can make you shirts, t-shirts, hats. They can make you belts. They could probably even make you an awesome, cool, custom mini helmet like this. But this one was the fancy work of Adam Lamprey. So uh, thank you very much for that. Good, sir. I appreciate the... uh, 
the new accessory for Fozzy. But back to Dynamite Enterprises. They can do anything you want customized. And if they don't have it on their site, which is dynamiteenterprises.com, you can reach out to Ethan, Ethan at dynamiteenterprises.com, and pitch it to him, and he'll probably say yes. He's very open-minded. He's on CEOs to Know right now for iHeartRadio and in the Spokane area. And he's a great guy. He'll work with you, and he'll make sure that uh, they get it right, and if they don't, that they fix it because they want to take care of you. So visit dynamiteenterprises.com. Tell them the fan show sent you, and whether it's promotional, advertising or just to have they can help you do it shirts hats stickers all of it so thank you again to ethan and dynamite enterprises for uh all of his hard work and making sure that we get uh, the best quality stuff here for the fan show so headlines headlines oh where to start where to start should we start with the rumor mill uh let's see <laughs> adam says i uh, didn't see the sailor jerry right there that's some good stuff uh it's funny because um, I, I used to I used to drink a lot. Not like I had a drinking problem, but when I lived a few blocks away from um, Gonzaga, Thursday night was their big college karaoke night, and so I would go out and I would have, you know, it was rotation who bought the pitcher, and uh, of course, since I could walk, it was no reason to like drink responsibly because. Uh, you know, I wasn't driving home, wasn't driving anyone home. So we would go around, we would, we would go around, we would go out and we would buy the rounds and we would sing karaoke. We would have a great time, but, uh, I, that those days are long behind me. And so it's kind of one of those when I'm trying to wind down from a busy, busy media day. And of course, everything that's been going on, uh, in personal life, it's nice to have a little something that you can sip on, uh, to end your night. And, uh, there's a story with Sailor Jerry. I do rum and Cokes, but, uh, we don't need to get into that right now, but just know that it's, it's a nightcap. I don't have some issue with, with alcohol, but if you do seek help and drink responsibly, of course, that's the message from the fan show. So first up, uh, the shock rumor, the shock rumor is, um, you know, it, it's a rumor, but it's not the first time that I've heard this rumor. In fact, this is from a separate source from the first rumor I heard, which I did not go off of when I initially heard it. This is the first time I'm actually reporting on the rumor that I've heard because now there's more to it. Um, when I made the post that there could potentially be 20 teams in the IFL come 2020, uh, Spokane was included in that. And, of course... As the post says, it is contingent on the success of another expansion team out west, which, of course, right now is the rumored Oakland team. So basically, there's a domino that has yet to fall. And when or if it does, several others will fall in place because you have the Oakland domino that needs to fall. And after that, you have announcement of Spokane shock that they're getting the shock name back the new ownership the coaching staff the players you know that that's the effect that you're waiting for but it's waiting on that one that one domino that's teetering as of right now so I take it for what it's worth that's what rumors are right the rest of the rumors of course are is there going to be more teams from the CIF will the CIF even be a thing next year I've heard that they're going to get some new teams that the IFL is going to get a few of their teams uh, ones that were in talks last year that didn't make the jump that uh, will this year but uh, the biggest one of course the biggest if is with the NAL right now I know you guys have heard that rumor and some people are scoffing at it but let me tell you that there are multiple sources right now that I have all the confidence in the world in that say it may not be as far-fetched as it sounds um, it, not a merger so to speak but uh, some sort of you know mix and matching of pieces to make that happen so uh, there could be a very big league next year um, that we could see for indoor and arena football. Very big one. Uh, in fact, today I heard that there could be as many as 24 teams. That's absolutely crazy. Um, Adam says that one domino to fall, uh, and then you have a bunch of dominoes all over the floor, which is a pain to clean up. Yes, that is very true, which, if not done correctly, would be the result of this particular domino scenario. Thank you for that, Adam. Uh, I see my coach of the year is watching this. Hey, Alante, good to see you as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, Adam says, I don't know if I'd call it controversy. I prefer to call it people who are butthurt because their choice wasn't the choice because logic apparently isn't a thing when you're, well, 
you know, you can fill in the blanks there. Thank you, Adam, though. You're always fun. Uh, Matt says, Oakland needs to be a quality team. None of uh, this team for a team's sake. And I will agree with you 100% on that because I feel like that's the issue we ran into with San Diego. And I know guys on San Diego that were very excited about that, but it was poorly done. You had two expansion teams that were a tale of two different teams. If you were to tell me that Tucson was an expansion team, I would have said you're full of crap because they not only made the playoffs, but they had decent, sizable crowds in their arena and they were competitive and their marketing and everything was done the right way. San Diego was like somebody just said, here, have a team, figure it out. Like, <laughs> like a kid going through puberty, like there's all this stuff happening, your body's changing. You're like, I don't know what to do. Uh, that is what San Diego was like. And I felt really bad for the guys I knew on the team because I know that they're competitors, they're players, and they wanted to have a successful season. But it, it starts at the top. you got to have the right people in place, and I don't feel like San Diego did. So, yes, Matt, to your point, I will completely agree with you 110% that this Oakland expansion, because I don't think Spokane is a question mark when it comes to if you resurrect a team, as it would be, um, especially if you get the shock name back, that as long as um, it's marketed right, you know, as long as they do advertising and put the right faces in the right places, then I think that this thing could be very successful. But Oakland, there's no there's no IFL history there, at least to my knowledge. Uh, not that I can recall. Maybe in that area of California, like how the San Francisco 49ers play in Santa Clara, California, there could be, but... Um, recent accounts i can't think of any sort of oakland history or ties to the ifl so it's another san diego you're putting a team just to put a team and for what there's no i don't believe there's an oakland market they're about to lose their nfl team and your remedy for for capitalizing on that is to introduce them to the world of indoor and arena football no no that's not uh that's that's not how that's gonna work anyway uh, so we'll see what the rumors shake out to be. But this was the one that I felt would get people the most excited. And apparently it has. Um, but, yeah, the rumor is that Spokane would be resurrecting, um, would be the resurrection team under the shock name, new ownership. But it's all contingent on if we can get another team out west, which right now the only team is Oakland. I haven't heard anything else. Uh, moving on, we did have ourselves conference championship weekend. And that was a very entertaining weekend. We had the Arizona Rattlers uh, over the Nebraska Danger. Final score, 62-45. Uh, this one kind of got out of hand uh, right after halftime for the Danger. So the Rattlers will go back to the IFL Championship, the United Bowl game, after missing it last year. I feel like it's important to say that they missed it last year because certain people act like they were in it and won it last year, and they did not. They missed the championship last year. So they will be back for the first time in two years, uh, even though I, I hate when people say it like that, like it was some big absence and it wasn't. But they will be back for a rematch of the 2017 United Bowl against the Sioux Falls Storm. This time not in Sioux Falls. This time will be in Arizona as Sioux Falls is able to get the win over the Iowa Barnstormers last minute, 52-50. to your final score after quarterback Daquan Neal and your fan show MVP went out. Um, that's tough. That is really tough. I don't feel, uh, you know, or I guess I feel for Dixie and the rest of the guys. Of course, Marshall Hart, friend of the, the fan show. And, uh, you know, they had high hopes. The flight crew, Barnstormers fan, they all had high hopes. They, everybody wanted that that matchup that we didn't get all regular season between Iowa and Arizona. And now we won't get that. So it's, it's weird. It's funny how things work out that way. Not that they're laughing, but obviously it's a tough pill to swallow. Uh, so your United Bowl championship will be Jan July. I almost said January, but that'd be nice considering it's going to be in Phoenix, Arizona. That's right. Phoenix in July. This is going to be a great time for football. Thankfully indoor, but still, you got to go to Phoenix, uh, land at the airport, get from there to a, the nearest air-conditioned place, which may be a car or a hotel, and then you have to get from there to the arena, and you're going to be out in like 112 degree temperatures for who knows how long uh, to get from A to B, and then if you have to wait out in line, so uh, Phoenix in July, yeah, good stuff, good stuff, okay, uh, so that will be July 13th. 
and it will be a great game. Sioux Falls and Arizona, I think there's some history with these two teams. Obviously, Arizona ended Sioux Falls' championship streak, and Sioux Falls uh, is looking for some payback because it was done at the Denny Sanford Premier Center in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh, your thoughts on the United Bull matchup? I'm sure you've got plenty. Uh, and Matt says, in a suit. Yes, thankfully my suits are all seasons, even if that season is the sun. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Uh, Adam says, if you're going to be an indoor team in California, just put one in San Jose. Apparently they're holding the Arena Cup hostage, though, was the last I heard. that The trophy that you see from Arena teams now going around is a replica because San Jose still has the original one. So I don't know if there's, like, bad blood there or what. Um, let's see here. Oh, Tony's watching. Good to see you, Tony. Um, I did want to go over the last of the awards that I had, though, that we didn't get to announce. Um, uh, Thursday's episode, which there are a few of those. So uh, let's go ahead real quickly. Uh, congratulations to our Breakout Player of the Year, a new award for the fan show, and that went to Keevan Rudd, who I thought – he was a human highlight reel. He was the first ever fan show top 10 number one play of the year, and he found himself on the top 10 more often than not. The only time I think he wasn't was when they were on a bye week. Uh, so he had a breakout year as far as I'm concerned. Uh, everybody was talking about him and Pedroza, and that was a very potent offense, but he was making some phenomenal plays. Uh, it took a lot of athleticism, so congratulations to Keevan Stud Rudd. Uh, outstanding offensive line of the year went to the Iowa Barnstormers. They allowed the fewest sacks, and they were ranked uh, very high as far as rushing for both their running back and their quarterback. And Daquan Neal only had three interceptions, so obviously they're protecting their guy pretty well. And he had, I think, the, the highest for passing touchdowns, too, next to E.J. Hilliard. Uh, outstanding defensive line of the year was the Arizona Rattlers, uh, which made a lot of sense because their defense was stout, man. That was a very dominant defense all year. Well, still is, obviously, because they're going to be in the United Bowl. And then we had the Kickers Need Love 2 moment of the year. Not kicker of the year, but the Kickers Need Love 2 moment. So a single moment in time of the entire season went to Diego Marquez for his uh, bobbled snap uh, turned into a touchdown, which I thought was fantastic. So kickers do need love too, folks. They score points. And the Fan Show Choice Award went to uh, Tucson's photographer, Mike Matina, and I explained that in the description that he was uh, a new photographer, not only me working with him, but to the sport and sports altogether. He started shooting in January, and this was his first go with the IFL or indoor football period, and I thought he did a phenomenal job. His work was very well done. And uh, anytime I needed a photo of a player, uh, I could message him and he would get it to me. He gave me the links to their Dropbox so I could sift through and find the pictures I needed. And he even offered that if during a game uh, I could message him to say, hey, can you get a few shots of this player if there was one doing well by halftime? So that's really above and beyond, and uh, it's that kind of work that I appreciate and that I think deserves a lot of respect. So he has mine. Uh, thank you, Mike Matina. And then the final awards that were fantastic we'll start back and we'll work our way forward so uh the game of the year um this was a close one it was either going to be this game or quad city versus green bay when they erased that uh what was it 14 point deficit uh 10 point deficit in 54 seconds had to get a touchdown get the onside kick and they did and then uh score another touchdown but this one, this had seven lead changes and was very entertaining start to finish. Um, and then for the way, for it to end the way that it did with a 42-yard touchdown to Connor Hollenbeck on the call of the year by Joe Stacy, uh, I thought it was well-deserved. And that was the March 23rd game between the Iowa Barnstormers and the Nebraska Danger game of the year. Then your rookie of the year, Lenoris Footman, who took a team that was, I think, 2-14 and 14 last year. And, uh, or no, I'm sorry, that would be 2 and uh, and 12 last year uh, to the playoffs with a winning record and hosting a playoff game with a newer head coach. Uh, and he was one of the top ranked that was a rookie. Uh, he was one of the top quarterbacks not named E.J. Hilliard or Daquan Neal. So congratulations to him in his first campaign with the IFL and the Green Bay Blizzard. Then outstanding special teams player of the year, Eric Thomas. I feel like that was an obvious choice. Great job there. Outstanding defensive player of the year went to Devontae Merriweather. Uh, great job by him all season. Uh, led the league in tackles. Tackles for a loss. And uh, just very, very crucial in their defensive performance all year long. 
Then we had Outstanding Offensive Player of the Year, E.J. Hilliard, who lit it up. Uh, he was the best quarterback to quarterback in the IFL, which you don't see a lot. You see a lot of uh, dual-threat quarterbacks and a lot of guys running it. He threw it, and he threw it very, very well. Then you had the Coach of the Year, Corey Roberson, who took a guy, a bunch of guys that were really no-names coming into the league, save for B.J. Hill, uh, a rookie quarterback, and went from a miserable season last year to a winning record, a hosting a first round playoff game and just having such a magnificent turnaround uh really well deserving of the award uh considering what he had to work with which wasn't a lot but he made it work he didn't even know who his quarterback was i think going into game one we had that conversation later and then finally your fan show mvp most valuable player daquan neal and i think it proved that at the end of that conference championship game against sioux falls I'm not taking anything away from ryan ballantyne but he's a receiver now he's not a quarterback anymore they needed their mvp quarterback daquan neal uh, but that's football as jose jefferson would say that is football but uh congratulations to this year's award winners there's a lot of awards i'm thinking about for next year so we'll have to see um you know what we can come up with obviously some awards won't return just because they're circumstantial to what's uh there we could get a whole bunch of new teams though and there could be a whole bunch of new logos and so we could do best logo again but there's some that may not need to be brought back next year just because it would be kind of repetitive we'll see though uh obviously you're going to do mvp and uh outstanding offensive defensive special teams players so congratulations again to those guys uh congratulations to all of the all ifl first and second team uh players that made it both through last word on sports and their uh all ifl first and second team and of course the ifl's uh all ifl first and second team i see casey's watching good to see hey trish good to see you too um and your guys's thoughts on the awards and everything i know that there's some people that were very much not shy about sharing their thoughts in the awards but hey you know it was a lot of fun i thought doing it all week was really good i know that i missed friday but there was a lot of stuff going on friday night and i said you know let's just do these saturday morning let's release it the day of the conference championship so yeah i i skipped the day i missed my mark i'm sorry but i thought doing five awards each day for five days was a lot of fun because uh, it gave everybody equal opportunity to be recognized and appreciated and i thought that was really cool uh to do it that way which was something that just came to my my mind last minute i said you know let's break it up let's do uh five a day let's give all these guys a little bit of time to enjoy their award there's some people i've heard that have printed out their awards and that framed them and they're hanging up in in their office somewhere which is awesome i know i never thought that would be the case but i worked really hard on the graphics i really did i wanted them to look special and uh, and i'm glad that some people feel that they did uh matt says it was something to look forward to each day which is good i i wanted to provide that for a week um other than just having to look forward to the show which i hope you guys look forward to each and every new episode right right anyway it doesn't matter but the 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 awards were a lot of fun to do um and lane olson congratulations he won the uh bass battles um all-star bass fishing's bass battles uh the river edition river season uh this last weekend on the columbia river i think he had like 10.16 pounds on that one which i guess would technically be 11 so i think it was 10.12 if i'm not mistaken but congratulations to him his first title and we got the fourth of july coming up uh we had battle bots which uh i don't know if there will be a battle bot special tomorrow night but um Matt says guilty. What are you guilty for, Matt? Uh, there was a lot of stuff going on this weekend. Again, thank you guys so much for all of your love and support. It really does mean a lot to me to know that. Uh, and even if there was two people watching, listening right now, I would still do this because I enjoy it. But to know that it goes beyond that now, that there is some sort of listenership audience and fan base established makes me feel good uh, because that was the point. You know, I wanted to be somebody that people could consider credible and knowledgeable and could have fun with and uh, relate to, be real with. I mean, there should never be anybody afraid to send something to my, my DMs or email me about because I'm essentially here for the uh, the fans. Adam says, uh, Bass Battle sounds like they're fighting giant bass monsters. <laughs> which would be interesting episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And Matt says he's guilty of printing the awards. All right, all right, fair enough, fair enough. So Matt Matt printed his award. Um, 
But it was a good week. I thought it was otherwise. So I'm, I'm glad to see that some of you agree with me on that. The United Bowl, uh, we will have a preview episode of that for sure. The, uh, the United Bowl is going to be uh, probably a lot of fun. I'm curious to see how many Sioux Falls fans travel because last the last couple of years, last several years, the United Bowl has been kind of in a reasonably located spot, I guess would be the best term, because Arizona, until Tucson and San Diego popped up, were kind of on their own little island. And still, if you look at from Arizona to the Midwest, there's a, a pretty significant gap there as far as teams and, and fan, you know, fan uh, housing or whatever the, the term is that I'm looking for. But it's going to be where you need to show up for your team if you're Sioux Falls. They're going to need you there because Arizona is going to bring their fans. They're going to get loud. They're going to get rowdy. And I think Sioux Falls needs good uh, representation there, uh, fan representation at the United Bowl. Um, Adam says he refuses to go to Arizona. I can't say that I blame you, man. Um, You know, there was a lot of discussion in certain groups this weekend after everything had happened, which I didn't realize I had raised that kind of awareness, maybe that's the right term, for just people's behavior uh, in groups and why some people feel that other fans just, you know, don't fit in and it it just blew my mind because I thought maybe it was just me but there was a lot of people that shared my feelings and thoughts on what was going on with this so uh, I am very thankful that everything worked out uh, well and that we're going to have ourselves a United Bowl championship and I think that about does it for everything that I wanted to go over here maybe I'll get back to the Sailor Jerry but uh, I do want to wish everyone a happy 4th of July early Uh, thank you guys all for tuning in and for a great week we're going to have new episodes next week including our big uh, United Bowl preview we'll be back to our regularly scheduled fan show programming after the holiday so we have my interview with coach Corey Roberson I want you guys all to enjoy that please and of course uh yeah um make sure that you like listen and subscribe give the show a share uh on facebook thank you all for 1800 likes i think that's the fastest we've ever gotten another hundred or 200 Uh, we got to 1700 so fast i didn't even have time to post a a thank you post and uh, now we're at 1800 moving on Uh, I can't wait for 2000. I think that's going to be a great moment for the show. Uh, So thank you. Make sure that you have liked it if you haven't done so already and that you share it so that your friends can like it too. Thank you guys. Have a happy and safe. Okay. Uh, We don't need any fingers blown off during the the holiday. Uh, Celebrate your nation's birthday and independence and all that good stuff. And uh, don't buy from Nike, I guess. I, that's funny. I didn't want to talk about on the, that on the show, but that, that's a funny situation with Nike and Kaepernick. That's some kind of power, man. <laughs> anyway, uh, a big thank you again to Adam for my new uh, studio decor. I think it looks great. looks even better on Fozzie when he's not uh, uh, putting up a fit to wear it. So thank you guys again, and it's been a lot of fun. iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, iHeartRadio is where we're available in podcast form. You can subscribe to any of those if you can't listen live or watch live on the Facebook Live that we do at the first portion of every uh, fan show episode. And then, of course, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, we're available on all of it, and we even have a YouTube channel. So make sure that you have liked uh, on all the platforms that you uh, participate in and share, share, share. So here we go. My conversation with Coach Corey Roberson, the fan show coach of the year. Thank you, Fan Nation, and happy 4th of July. All right, ladies and gentlemen, joining me now is the reigning fan show coach of the year. He took Green Bay to their first playoff appearance in seven years, even hosted a playoff game. He is Coach Corey Roberson of the Blizzard. How you doing, man? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. You know, I think that it's a bittersweet time of the year for me because obviously IFL coverage is some of my favorite. Watching you and your Green Bay Blizzard grow and have a winning season and really be a team to be reckoned with all year, punch your playoff ticket. I mean, it was exciting times. There was even a few playoff spots we didn't know about until the last game of the regular season and here we are at the end of it and it's it's bittersweet and i know that you're having some exit interviews with players you know and uh, i'm sure you're probably feeling that too but i wanted to talk to you about 
you know, pretty much summarizing your thoughts on the season. Like, like, how do you feel coming out knowing that you accomplished something great for the the people of Green Bay and ended the season? You know, maybe not the way you wanted to, but still on a pretty high note. Yeah, no, uh, you know, I'm still in that debriefing process. So, you know, we're going through the exit interviews with all the guys, and uh, you know, just trying to. <laughs> trying to talk to them about, you know, what went well, you know, what things that we need to work on as an organization and how can I get better as a head coach to better serve the, the young men that we have come in. And, uh, you know, just going through that, I haven't really uh, reflected too much on, on the season besides that last game. Um, I've yet to watch that game, uh, knowing that I made some calls that I probably should have uh, did some different things on, but, you know, hindsight 2020. Uh, if I were to give a, a instead of my long winded answer, uh, you know, you know, one thing that we wanted to do this year was be competitive, and I think we uh, we could check that box. Yeah, absolutely. You guys were very competitive from start to finish. I mean, I know I was there for that Iowa game with the three points, and I said, you know, this team is going to be measured by how they bounce back from this. And you guys bounced back in a really big way. Um, you guys had some really close games. There was some crazy endings to some games, including that, you know, uh, deficit that you had with under a minute left. You had to get the successful onside kick and then score right after that, and you did, and that was one of the best games all season so for you to have this group of guys that you know you may not uh it may not be the most well known throughout the league and a, a coach that's only in his second year be that competitive with a rookie qb at the center of it i think you did a phenomenal job but that's that's just me personally and my my own thoughts uh, thank you thank you yeah no uh Footman is a, a winner. He's a proven winner everywhere he's been. Um, high school, college, uh, you know, winning the SWAC championships over there at Alcorn State. Um, and to have a, a young man of that caliber has been uh, awesome. He's a terrific leader on and off the field. Um, and, you know, he brought he brought life back into the organization, not only him but the other guys. And uh, for them all to buy into the system, uh, our leadership role this year was great. Uh, so, you know, not to – just ten point footman, but you know he he played a valuable role in in our success. Was it hard to see BJ leave? You know, announce his retirement uh, again. I know it's a second time, and you can poke fun at him about it. But you know, he brought a lot more than just uh, great play and footwork, and of course, kick returns to the team. He was a veteran. He was a leader in that locker room. So, what was your feelings when you like? Did he talk to you about? you know, retiring at, at all before he made his decision, or was that all solely on him? No, we talked about it. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, that was his ultimate decision. Uh, and we knew, you know, that, I mean, age was playing a, a role in it. You know, he, his family, uh, spending time with his, his, his kids or whatnot, you know, all that stuff plays a role in when it's time to walk away. Uh, you know, he had, he had got, got injured this year as well. Um, which was a scare to the organization. Um, he was able to bounce back from that. Uh, you know, I just think, if, you know, the timing was, was when he wanted to walk away. Um, he came back on his own accord and, uh, you know, everything just worked out in the way it did for him. So to, to say this was it for me. Yeah, it's a tough decision that I don't envy. He's uh, like one of the third or fourth guys that I know that have made that decision. And, of course, he's made it before, so I'm, I'm going to assume this one probably sticks with him. But he's been such a centerpiece and key component to Green Bay, especially through these growing pains, because that's what it was between you know the last couple of seasons and this year was a lot of finding your guys' identity, which I think you did really well you and I talked last night and I said you know congratulations on being named my coach of the year and you know you were humble about it and modest saying I don't know what I did to deserve it and I told you flat out you know that to see that group of guys <laughs> out there uh playing the, the, their hearts out and to do that with that team for that fan base I said that is the result of great leadership that starts at the head coaching position and you said that you and Footman actually had a conversation and Something similar was said. Like, what? How did that conversation go? Uh, during our exit interview, uh, one thing that you know he said that stood out uh, was uh, the biggest thing that he admired the most about us as a whole coaching staff and myself with the leadership was, uh, you know, we never we we didn't settle. You know, we won more games than we won last year. So when we got to those four wins, 
um, on the season, we didn't settle. Uh, you know, we ran practice up a lot more on them. You know, we, we could have easily, you know, went in and started having fun in practice. And, you know, like our job is done, we did more than we did last year. But um, we didn't settle and we, we stayed on the guys and, and we kept pushing and kept pushing. That was one of the things that he admired the most. Um, yeah, so that's, you know, it, that, that kind of stuck out to me. What was it that you saw in Footman that, you know, there's moments, right, in the beginning of the season where you're not maybe certain about a position, and, of course, the, the biggest position to, to have uncertainty at has got to be quarterback. Who's going to lead your offense? Who's going to lead your team? And I remember you and I talking through Messenger uh, after one of the first couple of games, and you're like, yeah, I think I think we finally found our guy. And to see him be my rookie of the year um, and his accomplishments and what he was able to do with that team under your direction, was there a moment that you saw when you decided that not only would he be your quarterback, but then was sort of you know amplified throughout the season that reassured you that you made the right decision at that time when you named him your starter? Uh, I mean, it was, you know, you saw his play. You saw his play in camp to where the – um, he was closing the gap between him and the other quarterback. I, I believe last time or our first uh, conversation earlier, you know, we had a quarterback one and quarterback one A and one B. Um, <laughs> yeah. a, 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 after that first game, uh, watching film and, and knowing how he performed when he came in, and that was against um, Arizona, you know, we knew we knew at that point that this was the guy that was going to, you know, help us have some success this year. Um, just, just with his how he carried himself, his overall play, um, even though it wasn't the best at first, but you knew he had whatever it was. He had the it, it, it factor. So um, it was a you know easy easy decision for us to just you know we got to make a decision at quarterback here. Can't keep everybody you know the team wondering who is our man. Um, and, and it was you know it was my decision to make, and you know I went on and I put all the eggs in, in one basket to have him lead, lead our team. On offensive side. Yeah, it was great to watch him grow and develop as a player because next year he'll be a veteran. No more rookie, uh, you know, slump or, you know, jitters or whatever they call it uh, at this level. But I think that you guys definitely have a gem there in Lenora's footman. And, you know, really your whole team meshed very well with each other. On the offense, you had footman, you had. Keyshawn Taylor and you had B.J. Hill um, and then of course on the defensive side you had your backs and Powell and Triggs and uh, of course Marquez Gallman when he was there and yeah. healthy and Silverberry <laughs> Muhan one of the best names in all of the IFL so you guys really did have have a great group of guys there and I know that the object is for you to develop them to get them on their way to the next level but I mean have you thought any at all about any changes uh, for the offseason guys that you you definitely want to have back because of the kind of, you know, uh, shared mentality that maybe they bring to your locker room? Um, the, the leadership group was, was great. Uh, BJ, Silverberry, Goldman, Trigg, Footman, um, you know, those guys, uh, Keyshawn, all those, those, it was great. Every, anytime we bring in new guys, um, they made everyone feel accepted. They uh, accepted them and, and made sure that they they were understood what was going on. They knew the ropes or whatnot. So the leadership on the team, uh, regardless of the captains or just the you know the, the next player, um, they all they all made sure everyone felt welcome. Um, as far as bringing bringing guys back, you know the object is you know we are a two developmental uh, stage. You know, I would love to bring everyone back. Um, I thought we ended with a great group of guys, great group of uh, young men, athletes or whatnot, and uh, you know it, it, it you know it's my hope is always to retain as many players as we can. Uh, be, I am fully aware in this six month layoff, off season, you know, things come up with other people and, and things in their lives. So, you know, just, just, I'm trying to stay in touch with them as much as I can. And hopefully uh, we're able to re retain them all, uh, you know, to finish, you know, it, it, unfinished business, right. You know, the way we <laughs> yeah. ended, it wasn't, it wasn't a, uh, it wasn't a good taste in any of our mouths. So, uh, you know, we still got things that we can, we can we got unfinished business to take care of. Yeah, you guys definitely got your foot in the door, pun intended, with the quarterback play of Lenora's <laughs> footman. So, so next year you got to have the hashtag of like break down the door, you know, and and really make sure that you guys get past that first round and uh, make sure that nobody wants to play you guys in the postseason. Which I'm convinced that nobody did this year. Uh, Nebraska just happened to be 
on uh, the right side of luck this time, and that's about the only way that you can put it. So I, I don't envy not watching the game yet and knowing that you're going to watch that at some point in time because it, it will be tough. It was tough to watch it in real time because, you know, you guys had, had done so much this season. But either way, there is no reason whatsoever that you or any of your crew should hang your heads at all because this was really something special to watch this year, and I, I thank you so much for the entertainment all season long. Thank you. Thank you for everything and, uh, you know, all the stuff that you do for this organization, um, this, this IFL football world in general, um, all the football, whether it's this league or another league. Um, it's been great. You know, I like following you, keeping up with what you got going on. And I know it's, uh, you know, it's, it's dear to your heart and it's dear to a lot of people's heart who really appreciate what you do. Well, I appreciate you, Coach, and I'm glad that you guys are enjoying it. But uh, next year I'll make sure, uh, hopefully there's a few bye weeks and we can do our interviews during the bye weeks so that there can't be that uh, Coach Roberson jinx, apparently, that I have if I interview you before your next game. Yeah. So we'll keep it just just to bye weeks. Just, the second you go into a bye week, we'll, we'll have the interview. I'll make sure that that's reserved specially for you, <laughs> and that way we can avoid yeah. that. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was like two times, and it was, it was crazy because we talked about it. I'm like, okay, we went up against Arizona, you know, first game of the year. We had just interviewed. I'm like, all right, cool, you know, got that out of the way. Then all of a sudden, we we, we go on our win streak, and then uh, we got Nebraska that back to back. So we went to Nebraska. We interviewed right before that, and then we lost again. And I'm like, Rich, we are not doing any more interviews. I, <laughs> I felt so bad because the the worst feeling for me wasn't just that you guys lost, but it was that, you know, when we did our, our first interview ever together, you messaged me after and you said, hey, man, thanks a lot. I'm new to this whole interview and media thing, so I appreciate you taking it easy on me. And I was like, you know, we're going to get you, we're going to make you a pro at this. And so for you to have that feeling this season, it crushed me. I was like, man, I don't want to be the jinx. I want to help him be the next great coach interview and media rep that the team could ever ask for. And I felt, yeah, I felt bad, man. <laughs> no, no. At the end of the day, we got to go out and perform. And, uh, you know, we, we just left a couple of points on the field and, didn't get enough stops that game. So that, you know, it, it, it's no jinx. It's no, um, you know, the interview didn't didn't play a role in us not performing well on that day. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, you know, we're still friends at the end of the day, and that's the important thing. And uh, you enjoy, obviously, your time off, uh, which I'm sure you would have been happy waiting for a vacation after about two weeks from now. But, hey, uh, it, it always gives you something to aim for next season and i think next year will be uh even better than this season was and that's saying a lot for your guys so hey uh safe travels uh maybe see you at the united bowl but coach congratulations on being the fan shows coach of the year a well-deserved honor and thank you for so many entertaining and great moments this year all right i appreciate you thanks a lot absolutely take care all right and one more big thank you to coach Corey roberson the 2019 fan show coach of the year always great to catch up with him and i i really do wish that squad nothing but the best i think sky's the limit for them if they can retain a lot of players which is always tough at this level you want them to develop and move on and get an opportunity at the next level but man you, you miss them too because you know that they were they were yours to watch so to speak right like that's one of my players man he came from the ifl and and he's awesome. So best of luck to them regardless. I did want to mention what I forgot to in headlines, and that was that we had uh, some games that happened this weekend that I forgot uh, to mention, and that was the National Arena League. We had the Pirates and the Lions. Lions get the win 59-50 over Massachusetts, and then the Sharks continue their winning ways with a win on the road against New York, taking down the streets. 51-42, and finally, your goose egg of the week, Carolina in Orlando. The Cobras 60, Predators 0. I've heard some rumblings that there's some unrest in the Predators locker room, which when I visited, you know, I could say I, I can totally see how that would be happening right now, and you just wish them the best uh, in finishing out this season. You hope that the guys there, you know, take advantage of the opportunity at the very least, but I feel for them. 
I really do. And as far as the Arena Football League, we had the Philadelphia Soul take down the Empire, uh, giving them only their second loss of the season. So that was quite the feat. 54-43, your final in Albany. And we also had the Brigade of Baltimore score 36 unanswered points to take down the Columbus Destroyers. Oh, that's a tough one. And that is a final of 50-12. to 12. And then finally, we talked about it last week when Nick Hag returned to the show, and that was that the Black Jacks needed to win out in order to get in to the postseason. Win and you're in. They control their own destiny, and they took the first step of three in getting that and ensuring their postseason fate, and that was with a dominant win over the Valor. So congratulations to Nick Hag and the Atlantic City Blackjacks. Congratulations to the Soul, who those two will actually meet uh, coming up next week. So that or this week, I mean. So that's going to be a whole hell of a lot of fun to see how that one goes. But yeah, it was uh, a great weekend of indoor and arena football, and we will be back with more of the fan show next week. So happy Fourth of July, folks! Enjoy the festivities and however you celebrate it. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we've had a great round of IFL and everything that's slowly but surely coming to its epic conclusion July 13th. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, it's not official unless it's fan show official. Best of luck to you and yours. Go Niners! And of course, it's all fun and games until you butt fumble. Good night, folks! Do you remember the time that Mark Sanchez ran into his player's butt? That was funny sports. Thank you for having me on the show, man. I love the fan show.